in terms of the chronology and the lore, mm -hmm. Mercury was a, a lush garden, garden world. world. Yes. And then the Vex show, show up, up and ruin mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So they've turned this into their own machine world, essentially. Right. Yeah. And they've hollowed out the core of the planet, and that is something we're going to talk about why they did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And <laughs> that's one of the mysteries that we'll solve. And then this is obviously uh, an in-game view of that environmental landscape. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so just, just a piece of Mercury right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're seeing is uh, that's, that's the gate uh, that actually takes you to the infinite forest. And that's something that Christine was talking about just mm -hmm. a couple seconds ago. Yeah. Um, their reality engine. Their reality yes. engine. So this is an opportunity for us not only to be able to, as a player, to be able to see uh, Mercury on the surface and where we're at right now and today, but then also by venturing through the gate, you can start to explore uh, the, the mechanisms that is the machine and then also past, present, and future of Mercury. So this is a concept of the infinite forest. Uh, this is essentially how they jump through time and space and, and look at every possible eventual outcome mm -hmm. of everything that they do. Right. They, they, I, I, I call it trying to find the equation for, fu for, for the future. As the Vex move through this space and as they tackle uh, every different possible reality, uh, what is that, how does that manifest itself physically in that environment? So, great quick, great quick. Fabulous question. Um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure early on, uh, when we're starting to think about how we want to interact with the Vex and, and, and get into their lore, their ecology, we want to be able to expose players not only to the present Vex that, everybody's ever, that they've seen and they've fought against for, uh, for quite some time, um, but this now is an opportunity for us to dig deeper into the precursors and the descendants, which are also going to be facing in Curse of Osiris. Um, the, this landscape that you're also seeing, um, I, I think it's really important to talk about how the gameplay unfolds inside of the Infinite Forest. Mm -hmm. um, it's the way that we built it. It's uh, the first time you play through this mission, you'll run through it and you'll experience certain foes and certain objectives. Mm -hmm. And if you were to run through that, that, that mission again, odds are that space is not going to play out the exact same way. The space is different. The enemies that you may face is different. different. Right. Would you say that this is procedurally generated? Absolutely not. No. So this is. This is lovingly crafted, um, very intelligently assembled mm -hmm. uh, in a way that we can create new and unique experiences every time you come into the infinite, into the infinite forest. Yeah. What, yes. what are we looking at here? So, so this, is, this, is dark, this is deep into the future. We call this, we, we refer to this picture as the dark future. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is where the sun has gone dead. Uh, you're, what you see in the foreground there is the lighthouse after like a tremendous amount of entropy. There is no life on the planet. The only thing that remains is Vex. There's no life anywhere. No light, no dark, just Vex. Just Vex. Just yeah. nothing to light the way, but mm -hmm. just a sea of red vexed eyeballs. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a piece of concept art created by? Uh, this is by Dorje. Dorje Bellbrook. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. stellar. Wonderful, wonderful work. And then this is what it looks like inside of the game. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the lighthouse in the dark future. We also, we, I want to call out real quick that this is the space that um, you're going to be able to uh, start a lot of quests. This acts as like the hub for most of Mercury. Okay. Um, you're going to start a lot of your missions here. Um, you're going to want to kind of resolve some of your missions here. There's a lot of mysteries within the lighthouse for you to explore. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a few people for you to interact with. Well, I have a controller in my hands, so let's go there now, shall we? Let's do it. Yep. All right. The scent of ozone. Come closer, warlock. So much like our interaction with other in-destination uh, vendors, uh, Brother Vance has uh, assumed a, a functional role as somebody who will guide us and reward us. Absolutely. Uh, he, he sits within the lighthouse, um, much like uh, Failsafe, you know, as, and, and Devrim. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and others. The, and there you go. And this, this will be an opportunity for you not only to learn a little bit more about Vance, but then also how Vance sees Osiris mm -hmm. and, and his eagerness for his return. Yep. And uh, we can see here that uh, oh. Vance has his own engram. Yep. And uh, the, uh, the levels have been raised. The levels have been raised. Uh, player level is, up, we're bringing it up to 25. Okay. And your light level will go to 330 um, as a soft and 335 if you've got your mods. Okay. I'm looking uh, Egyptian and badass myself right now. What is this installation right here? So uh, this is basically a tracker or a history marker for some of the optional activities that you're going to be able to have as a player mm -hmm. at the end of campaign. Okay. Um, the uh, if if you actually look at your your hand cannon that you got it in your hand right now. Yep. Um, that's actually one of the destiny theme uh, destination themed weapons that is like 
Basically, the notion is older weapons that Osiris has grabbed, taken, and modified using Vex technology. Yeah. Um, you actually have an opportunity to, to go and adventure for uh, the ability to forge these types of weapons. Okay. And that, that object that you're looking at right now, that actually shows you the markers of all the different ones that you've been able to create to date. We should go through the gate. We should go through the gate. Here we go. So uh, we're going to see what's on the other side. And here we go. We are going to visit Mercury for the first time. Welcome to Mercury. As you can see, I have a fire team waiting for me. <laughs> right here, we have a Titan dressed similarly in some fabulous... This is our destination theme gear. Okay, so this is, this is the gear that I'll earn by uh, playing the campaign and be, being a willing combatant. And then... Uh, and there's my favorite. I play Hunter. Oh yeah, are we playing favorites now? <laughs> well then, we have to have another warlock. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm all the warlock you need today. <laughs> so, they, they know the rules. If I'm going to sit in the chair and hold a controller, I get to be the warlock. Uh, all right. <laughs> so th this is our public space. So this is, this is the space uh, uh, that exists in the present time. Mm -hmm. um, this is where uh, public events will occur, lost sectors, all the things that people have, have loved yeah. to find and explore uh, on EDZ and other places inside of Destiny 2. This is a pretty big deal for us as well. Uh, we have a, a bespoke public event. Um, it is handcrafted for the space and integrated into uh, the public space. Okay. Uh, a rather big public event from what I've heard. Uh, it's, it's our largest it's debate. Uh, probably want to watch out. Yeah, watch out for that next milk. Radial uh, fluid. fluid, please. Yes, come <laughs> on, come on. You're, you're sitting next to your next to your narrative. You got to be on point here, man. Uh, so, uh, as they have uh, engaged the enemy, whether we like it or not, we've stepped into a war with the cabal. Uh, if you take a peek, yeah, yeah, take a peek, and if you can not get shot at the same time, but if you look up over to your right. Yep. Um, not only will, well, see, let me get a bird's eye you, view. Yep, yep. Let me, let me go up. That's a lot. There you go. There Keep me go. safe up here, boys. I'm trying to lead a tour group. So not only are we at, like, this is again, right after the campaign of D2. Yep. So the Almighty is out there in the horizon. Yep. Um, and then if you look up there, that is actually the lighthouse. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can see the lighthouse from the outside for the mm -hmm. first time. And then uh, very close proximity to our sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, what remains of the Almighty is still in the skybox. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, Great opportunity to get a tan. Yes, yes, exactly. Or get burnt to a crisp. I am now deep within the planet of Mercury? Yes. The, the entire, the infinite forest is, pretty much fills the core of the planet. The, the Vex came in, they took it over, they hollowed it out, and they built this. And it, they keep building. I, I, from, a, from a, an aesthetic perspective, it was, it was a goal of ours to make sure that we could create something that felt like it's set outside of time and space. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, we come back and look at that, that postcard, and now that you're here, boots on the ground, actually looking at the space, we wanted to make sure it felt surreal, it felt uh, uh, dreamlike. Well, as my fire team forges ahead, I'm gonna park right here, just so that we can take a look at the destination. Sure. Uh, we can see, uh, some of these different installations here. Yep, we call those trees. Okay. Uh, those, uh, the infinite forest has to have trees. The forest yes. needs trees. And, and what, what would the Vex consider a tree? So, and uh, you can see that uh, there's sort of a different aesthetic for some of the different trees. This right. one's mm -hmm. pristine. This uh, one is not. That one is not. These, these are all different trees that allow you as a player to go to different times. Mm -hmm. So as you, like the one on the right that you were just looking at, uh, that will take you to the future, to the dark future. Um, the one that's just slightly off to the left, that's one that's going to take you to another version of the past, yeah. uh, to the present, and then the one that's pristine that you're looking at right now um, is deep in the past when Mercury okay. was a lush garden planet. And uh, that is one of the things that we are leaving for player exploration. We're not going to show you Mercury of the past not today. Yet. Not yet. By your command. Please, and, thank uh, you. You can see <laughs> we are, in fact, inside the planet. Uh, there is no sky here. So let's take a look at the director. Uh, let's open this right now. Uh, just want to give you uh, a brief tour of some of the different things that you can expect to find as part of Curse of Osiris. Uh, the first thing that we will take a look at is uh, the strike menu. As you can see here, the Heroics Strikes playlist, the Heroic Strikes playlist rather, is coming back. Uh, great source of cooperative fun. Uh, 
I also want to take this stream as an opportunity to answer what has been a question since the original reveal of Curse of Osiris at Paris Games Week. Uh, we have made the promise of new raid content. So let's take a look uh, at the director again. I'm going to open uh, the Leviathan menu here. And uh, as we look at how this menu has changed, the original raid is still a component of the experience, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but we've added a new note. The yep. Leviathan Eater of Worlds is the name of the activity. Uh, if you could, summarize for me, what is a raid layer? Uh, a raid layer is a brand new six player raid activity. Mm -hmm. uh, in this raid layer, we're going back to the Leviathan. It's an entirely new set of encounters. New puzzles, new loot, completely new places to explore. You gotta remember this ship eats planets. That's how big this thing is. Big place. Giant. Lots of different places to explore. And then we have a brand new final boss for you to fight. Okay. And um, then uh, we also have the original raid. And it doesn't matter if you've completed the Leviathan uh, main raid uh, either. You can play this anytime you want. Separate activity, yep, separate requires activity. six players. Um, what is the scope of a raid lair, if you were to try to size it up? So it's not as lengthy as the original Leviathan, mm -hmm. but you know there's still a, a boss and then all the challenges leading up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be a pretty sizable addition. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's no less challenging or less fun than any other raid we've made. This raid is a ton of fun. We've been playing a lot internally. It's extremely challenging. You're gonna die a lot. You're, we're gonna okay. You're gonna right. die. A is lot. that that's the challenge? <laughs> it's you're, very hard. you're gonna die yeah. a lot, guardians. Uh, so hopefully that challenge is accepted. Uh, what are we gonna earn? New armor, new weapons, new cosmetics, all at a higher light level. Okay. Yep. And we should also note that you mentioned we're bringing up the original Leviathan raids. So those rewards are gonna get brought up as well too. So you're gonna have a variety of raid content to pick from each week. Some nights you might feel like a longer raid. Other nights you might only have time for raid layer. Will there be a prestige mode? for the raid lair? Uh, we're gonna have a prestige mode. Uh, it's brutal, the, the sandbox difficulty is way up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, you're gonna die hard. a lot. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're going to die a lot, okay. With this, I can see that we have, uh, we have a, a node here um, that's blank. What are you gonna fill that with? That's, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, that's gonna be the uh, second raid lair uh, and it's gonna be an expansion too. If you're, uh, if you're a hardcore raider in Destiny, uh, this environment uh, is not strange to you. Uh, we are aboard the Leviathan in orbit around Nessus, and this planet-devouring machine, this space-faring killer of worlds, is a big place. Yeah. Takes a big place, takes a big ship to eat a planet. Yeah, and so far we've only been to the palace on the top of the ship, and this thing eats planets. There's a lot of different places that we can go, mm -hmm. and so we thought, hey, let's go back to Leviathan. We've got more stories to tell. We have totally new places to go. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go somewhere else this time. Yeah. You still haven't been down below. You've uh, seen a little bit under the city, but yes. that ship is massive. Into the belly of the beast, as it were. Yes. Mm -hmm. The original name for it before we named an achievement that. <laughs> okay. So now we are uh, going to investigate the Eater of Worlds. Uh, in the uh, original raid in Destiny 2, uh, we did this ascent. And uh, where are we going this time? You're going down. Yeah. Down into the belly, like you said. Uh, so we, we don't want to show too much. We can maybe take them in the door, but all right, not not too much further than that. But <laughs> in the immortal words of Kevin Flynn, that is a big door. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna park it right here. So this is if you are a raider and if you are ready for new challenges, this is what awaits you.